Hi all, it's Whitney, and I've been getting a lot of questions about the final project, so I thought I would do a quick little video and hopefully address those for everybody. Um, so the main questions I've been getting are, number one, so is the purpose of this project to create an original model? Number two, if so, how do I do that? And number three, what's all this business about gaps and omissions? Okay, so, um, answer to question one, yes. The purpose of this project is to create an original model. You're going to name your model. You can name it after yourself if you want, which I think is kind of a cool idea. Number two, how do I do that? And number three, what is this business about gaps and omissions? Well, um, the way that you do that is you're going to choose the three models and theories that we've learned about this semester that you feel are the most relevant and most useful to you in your daily practice as a nurse, in your specialty. And um, that really gets at the heart of what this course is about, which is not only to teach you about the theories that are out there and the models that are out there, but also to help you understand how you might use them in practice. Because after all, we're DNP students, so we're all about practice, we're all about the practical application of research and the practical application of models and theories. So um, part of the assignment is to choose those three models and theories and then you're not going to use them wholesale. You're not going to use the whole models and theories. You're going to choose the most useful, most relevant concepts within those. And so you're going to pick and choose this from this theory, this and this from this model, this, this, and this from this theory, whichever ones you feel are going to be the most useful to you in your specialty in actually doing what you do every day as a nurse. And part of the assignment is explaining to us your rationale for that, for why did you choose those three models and theories, and then why in particular did you choose the concepts that you chose from them? Why do you think those are going to be the most useful to you in your practice? So that's part of the equation. Then um, the gaps and omissions part of the equation is basically, you know, you have kind of acted as Dr. Frankenstein in the first part of the assignment. You know, just as Dr. Frankenstein went and got bits and pieces of all these dead people, gross, I know, and put them all together and stitched them together and zapped them with lightning and created a whole new person. Okay, that's my cat. Excuse me. Ivy, get out of the way, please. <laughs> Sorry about that. So just as Dr. Frankenstein cobbled together a whole new person from bits and pieces of other people, you are cobbling together a whole new model from bits and pieces of other models and theories. Um, but then you may find that there's something missing, that spark of lightning that's going to ignite your model and really make it workable. What is that? Um, it could be an additional concept or two from a fourth or fifth model and theory that we've learned about. Or it could be something that you come up with completely on your own that isn't from an existing model or theory, just an idea that you feel is necessary to make your model really come alive and really be workable and useful to you in practice. So it could be something like, well, we need a provision in there for stress management, or we need something in there about family support, or who knows. Um, it depends on you and exactly what it is that your model is all about. Um, but that's what we mean by gaps and omissions. That's the stitching that holds the whole thing together. That's the bolt of lightning that really makes your model come alive. And um, at some stage, we're going to um, want to see how it all might work. In the concept analysis, we did a model case so that you could kind of show how you would use that particular concept in practice. And you might do something similar here. You know, it's not necessarily a requirement, but um, you could come up with a hypothetical patient care scenario where you can demonstrate how um, your model would work, all the different steps or all the different components, and how an actual advanced practice nurse might um, actually make use of this model in practice. So I think that can be really useful to kind of um, remember that examples can be much more powerful than explanations and you may want to do something like that as well. I think that um, I would certainly recommend having a look at that sample paper that Dr. Anderson posted because although I know most of you are um, taking the presentation option instead of the paper and presentation option, it's still the same assignment, um, whether it's a paper or a presentation. It has the same requirements, and the student that we chose this model paper from did quite a good job, I think, although those are never presented as perfect 
and you don't have to do things exactly as the, the student in the sample paper did, it's still going to go a long way, I think, toward demystifying that assignment for you and helping you to understand all the component parts of it. So I would definitely have a look at that. And um, I hope that that has answered your questions. I hope I haven't confused you further, <laughs> certainly. But um, I'm around. Dr. Anderson is around if you have any other questions. And please don't hesitate to get in touch if that's the case. And good luck, everybody. We look forward to watching your presentations.